What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another video and today we're going to be talking about how to properly shoot a thumb button release to achieve a surprise shot every single time. I posted a video on my Instagram page showing what proper technique looked like and there was a lot of interest in that so I figured I would just do a quick video. Now there are a few things that I want to cover uh, specifically for those people that are looking to transition from an index to a handheld for the very first time. Uh, there's a couple things that you, you have to consider and really there's a lot of questions that I get. Uh, in regards to this. Um, and the first question is what release should I go with? Uh, what I would recommend is buy something like middle of the road as far as cost goes. Uh, shoot that release and then if it is something that you're going to commit to, you can always make the investment to buy a higher end release at a later date. Uh, keep in mind you can join some of the Facebook pages, uh, some of the archery pages on there and score used releases at a very affordable price. A lot of those releases are in great shape. People have bought them, tested them out, decided that they didn't like them and they're getting rid of them. Like I said, you can score some pretty nice releases for a pretty reasonable price. Uh, now the next very popular question I get and probably the most frequent is do I need to change my draw length from going to an index to a handheld? And the answer is yes, uh, but there are a couple different ways that you can tackle this. Uh, you can play around with the let off on your bow. So right now mine is at 85%. If I were to change it to 80%, it would definitely bring my hand position in without having to change my draw length. Uh, obviously you could shorten your D loop uh, and the combination of those two will get most people in the proper position. Uh, as a last resort, obviously, you can always dec decrease your draw length to get your hand in the proper spot. Now, real quick, let's talk about proper hand position. Uh, and, the, and John Dudley describes this better than anyone. Um, he's got a ton of videos on his page. You can check them out. But basically, uh, hold your hand out straight, uh, bend at the elbow, touch your chest, and then turn your head and bring your hand up. And that's gonna be your ideal anchor point or hand position. And then from there, you can go ahead and adjust your bow accordingly. Now, the next thing that I wanna talk about is, is how you're holding the release and how you're anchoring. Um, you want to be very consistent with your hand placement. Uh, if you go completely vertical, you'll introduce torque to your D loop uh, and, or torque to your string and you'll start to see some left to right misses. Also, if you're inconsistent with your hand positioning and you're doing this or if this changes, you'll also start to see some left to right misses. So again, um, you wanna make sure that you're being very consistent. Now, the way that I anchor and the way that I position my hand um, is I like to split my jaw with my index and my ring finger. So when I draw back, you'll see me place my index below my jawbone and then I'll rotate up. And when my ring finger makes contact with my face, I know that my hand position is the exact same every single shot. Some people like to position their, their index finger on top of their jawbone, but the only thing that I don't like about that is obviously you have that skin and there can be some inconsistencies where if you lock that finger underneath the jaw, it's not gonna move on you. Now. Uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is release neck length. I get a lot of questions on that as well. Um, I would let your draw length dictate what release length or neck length you go with. Um, if you have a longer draw length, obviously, if you have to decrease your draw length, uh, you have a little bit more room to give up. Whereas if you have a shorter draw length like myself, you want to maximize that and having a shorter neck release allows you to run a longer draw length, but still allows you to maintain proper hand position. And that's why I've personally gravitated towards uh, the Carter Two Simple. Now, uh, when it comes to how you address the release with your thumb, uh, a lot of people do this different ways. There's no right or wrong way. You just wanna do what's most repeatable for you. Um, some people like to really hook in and then pull through the shot. Uh, being that I shoot Carter releases, these releases don't give you a ton of adjustability as far as the length of the, the thumb peg or the position. Um, so so I don't like doing that because if I do that, what it does is it actually cants the release forward, uh, which introduces torque to the string. I like to just basically wrap my thumb around it without having to really curl up on my hand. And then I apply uh, consistent pressure while pulling through the shot um, until the shot breaks. Now, uh, when you transition to a thumb button release, what I would recommend is you blank bail shoot for a while, uh, because if you have inconsistency uh, with the amount of pressure that you're putting on the thumb peg, 
when you go to pull, sometimes your shot will take longer, sometimes it'll be shorter. Uh, and like I said, that's all coming from the inconsistencies with the amount of pressure. Now, if you're not putting a lot of pressure, and this was a tip that I got from Chase over at Sunrise, located out in Fenton, Michigan, uh, but if you're not putting enough pressure, uh, what'll happen is you'll start to pull, 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 the shot won't break in time, and then you'll start to collapse on your front shoulder and your shot will start to break down, your front hand will shake a lot. Um, so like I said, blank bail shooting really helps with this. It removes uh, aiming from the equation, it removes that anxiety, and you can really just focus on your shot process and your shot execution, and really dialing in how much pressure it takes uh, to get that shot to go off in that optimal shot window. Um, so real quick, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like uh, if you punch a thumb button. And, and that's one thing that I do want to mention. Uh, these releases are definitely less forgiving when compared to an index style release. Uh, if you start to punch this, you'll start to see some left to right misses. Uh, whereas if you can get repeatable with pulling through the shot, you're going to get very accurate uh, results. So uh, real quick, I want to show you what it looks like when you punch a trigger because um, there's you'll see clearly that there's a big difference basically uh, your hand will stay stationary and that's a good indicator that you're punching the trigger or commanding the shot versus pulling through uh, but real quick let's go ahead and rip one where we basically punch the trigger and you can see that my hand basically didn't fall back <clears throat> now like I said I got this target it's it's probably like two feet away. Uh, but I like to blank bail shoot a lot throughout the season, especially if the weather's really crappy outside because it allows me to just kind of focus on my form. Uh, but this is what basically it's gonna look like if you're, you're pulling through the shot to achieve that surprise shot every single time. You can see that I put my index underneath my jawbone. I rotate up, make contact with my face. And there's that, that fallback that you're going to get. Now, one other example that I want to show you is inconsistency with the pressure. So um, you saw that that shot broke in a decent amount of time. Now, if I put an inconsistent or less pressure on my thumb button, you'll see that it's going to take a little bit longer to go off. And it'll also require a little bit more pulling. And you see that that shot took a, a little bit longer to go off. Not crazy, but the more that you're inconsistent with that, the longer or the more variance that you're going to get between shot to shot. So, and again, this is where blank bail shooting really comes in, in handy or really helps. You can see that that shot went off pretty quick and I'm getting that hand follow through. And when your hand drops, um, you want to think about bringing your hand over your shoulder. That's going to be proper technique, which is going to uh, help you from injuring your, your bow hand or, or your, uh, your pulling hand or your shooting hand. But um, that's it for this video. Just want to cover this. If you guys have any additional questions, uh, you can leave me a comment below. You can always reach out to me directly on Instagram. I'm always happy to help. Uh, if you guys have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Your guys' support greatly helps us out, keeps us doing what we're doing. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you on the next one. Oh,